Hi. So in this video lecture, what we'll look at is a method to find all possible Pythagorean triplets. Now everyone is aware of Pythagoras theorem, where it says that in any right angle triangle, x and y if these are the base and the perpendiculars and z is the hypotenuse then we have x square plus y square is equal to z square now you might be aware that numbers like three square four square and five square or basically three four five is a typical pythagorean triplet x y z and integers three and four and five similarly uh, six and eight and ten will be a pythagorean triplet similarly 5 and 12 and 13 will also be a Pythagorean triplet. So these are our Pythagorean triplets, but we want to find a method to find all such Pythagorean triplets. So uh, we will resort to a proof by Euclid in the fifth century BC. So Euclid proved a theorem in the fifth century BC by which we will be able to find in general all possible Pythagorean triplets. There are infinite such triplets and we'll be able to find each of them. So that is pretty cool. So what we'll see here is this theorem by Euclid. So let's go about it in some stages. The first step that Euclid uh, proved was let's consider, let's consider only primitive Pythagorean triplets. By primitive, we mean primitive triplets. Primitive triplets are such that they don't have any common factors. So the numbers x, y, and z don't have any common factors. Any common factors. So we will not talk about the case when x, y, z are 6, 8, 10, because it's just a multiplication by 2 of this 3, 4, 5 triplet. So if you multiply 3 by 2 and 4 into 2 and 5 into 2, you get 6, 8, 10. So we'll not consider these triplets. We want to find these types of triplets where there are no common factors. So the first thing he said was that in any such triplet, x and y cannot both be even, both be even and both be odd. So this is not possible. So what he says is basically x has to be, x has to be even, then y has to be odd, or it could be the other way around. It could be x is odd and y is even. So how will we go about proving this, right? Let's look at it on the next screen. So let's take the case when X and Y are both even. X and Y are both even. So any even number can be written as two times some other, some integer, 2K. Y can be written as say 2J, right? Because any even number has two other factors. So X square plus Y square will become 4k square plus 4j square, which will be 4 times k square plus j square, right? So clearly z square is equal to 4 times k square plus j square. If it is a Pythagorean triplet, x square plus y square is equal to z square. So z has 2 as a factor because z square is divisible by 4. z square is divisible by 4. Clearly it is divisible by 4 here right so z has two as a factor z must have two as a factor so that means that x and y and z x y and z all three have two as a factor but that goes against our assumption that x y z have no common factors so we had assumed that earlier like we were only looking at pythagorean triplets like three four and five where there are no common factors other than one so here, apparently, if you assume that X and Y are both even, we end up having X and Y and Z, all of them has two, have two as a factor, which makes it an impossibility. So this is a contradiction. So this is wrong, right? Let's take the case when X is odd and Y is also odd. So we'll try to prove that this is also wrong, right? So how do we prove that? If any odd number can be written as 2k plus 1 and y can be written as 2j plus 1 where k and j are again arbitrary integers. Any odd number can be written like this. So x square plus y square becomes, when you square it, it becomes 4k square plus 4k plus 1 plus 4j square plus 4j plus 1. So it becomes 4 times k square plus j square plus k plus j plus 2. 
So this is our expression for x square plus y square, which is also equal to z square because this is a Pythagorean triplet. So then we get z square is equal to four times something plus two. So if you divide z square by four, you should get two. You should get two. But that is an impossibility. So what we'll prove next is that that is impossible because if z is even, then z square will be equal to, if z is even, you can write it as 2i, right? So z square will just be 4i square. So z square will be divisible by 4. So zero remainder will be there. And if z is odd, then z, z can be written as 2i plus 1. So z square will be 4i square plus 4i plus 1. So that is clearly going to leave only remainder one when you divide by four, right? So here we are getting Z can only be even or odd. And in both the cases, we are not getting remainder two, right? So there is a contradiction. Z square, when you divide by four, you're getting either remainder one or a remainder zero. Your remainder is zero because it's completely divisible by four. But if we assume the odd and odd case for X and Y, we are ending up getting z squared is divisible by four with a remainder two. So this is a contradiction. So this is also not possible. So Euclid has proved now one thing. The result that he has gotten is that if x square plus y square is equal to z square and x, y, z are Pythagorean triplets, Pythagorean triplets with no common factors, Pythagorean triplets with no common factors, right? That means that either one of X or Y has to be even and the other one has to be odd. So X and Y, this can be even and this must be odd then, or it has to be X is odd and this must be even. So that is the first part of the proof. Now let's look at the second part. Like we need to eventually get to a method to find all possible Pythagorean triplets, right? So. Uh, let's look at let's look at this case for example let's let's assume that x is even and y is odd then that means that z square is equal to x square plus y square if x is even this x square is even and y is odd then odd into odd will be an odd number so you get even and odd and then when you add even plus odd you end up getting an odd number so this means that z square must be odd Z square is odd, that implies that Z is odd. Because if Z square doesn't have two as a factor, then obviously Z cannot have two as a factor. So we have gotten that out of the three numbers, X, Y, and Z, two of them must be odd and one of them must be even, right? So let's assume, let's, let's work with that. Let's take Z as odd, X as even, and Y as odd, right? So then immediately what we know is that Z plus Y must be even. And so similarly, Z minus Y must be even, right? So because odd plus odd or odd minus odd gives an even number. So, so let's assume that for the sake of the argument, let's take Z plus Y is equal to two times U and Z minus Y is equal to two times V. This these two are equations. So we can say here u and v are any integers. These are just variables that have been taken to make z plus y even number and z minus y even number. So clearly if you add these two, you get z is equal to u plus v and y is equal to u minus v, right? You get these two equations. When you add and subtract these two, you get z is equal to u plus v and y is equal to u minus v. Then what we get is x square will be equal to z square minus y square. This is the Pythagoras theorem only x square plus y square is equal to z square. Therefore, x square is equal to z square minus y square. So that becomes u plus v whole square minus u minus v whole square. That is equal to 4uv. Now x square is equal to 4uv we are getting. That means x square by 4 is equal to u into v. 
x square by 4 is equal to u into v and we can say this is x by 2 whole square is equal to u into v right correct so we have gotten this result where x by 2 whole square is equal to u into v but x was an even number was an even number so x by 2 is an integer right so what we have ended up getting is that the product of two u and v product of u and v is an integer square so u into v must be a perfect square must be a perfect square we'll see what are the implications of this on the next screen so let's go to the next thing so we are getting x by 2 whole square is equal to u into v so uv is a perfect square now if product of two numbers is a square two numbers is a square then there are multiple ways in which that can happen is a square is a perfect square so x by 2 whole square multiple ways in which it can happen one way in which it can happen is that u is a square of some number and v is a square of some other number right then s is s square into t square will be the square of basically s t whole square right so that is one way in which it can happen what we, uh, the other ways in which it could, it could happen is u has a prime factorization where some prime factor has some power and there is another common prime factor here which multiply together and you get a even power for that prime factor so what we are going to prove is that u and v here cannot have cannot have any common factors any common factors so because obviously if u and v have a common factor let's say u and v have a factor d have a factor d then u plus v was equal to z right so u is divisible by d v is divisible by d therefore z has a factor d as a factor d and similarly u minus v is equal to y therefore y also has a factor d y also has a factor d and uv is equal to x by 2 whole square so clearly x also has a factor d because uv for uv is equal to x square right so then we will have x y and z have a common factor here x y z end up having a common factor d but that was not the type of pythagorean triple that we were looking for right so so we know that u and v cannot have any common factors if u and v cannot have any common factors then each of them must be a perfect square to to make a product of a perfect square so if the product uv is a perfect square then u must be a perfect square of some number and v must be a perfect square of some number so u must be say s square and v must be say t square right so therefore x square becomes 4 uv which is equal to from this this comes from here so 4 times s square t square and you get x is equal to 2 st when you take the square roots on both sides and basically y becomes u minus v so that becomes s square minus t square and z becomes u plus v which is s square plus t square now this is our uh, euclid's result which says that given any two integers s and t you will be able to find x y and z which are pythagorean triplets by following these formulas so let's take a minute and try to understand what we have gotten right so we'll go to the next screen and we'll say that let's say x is equal to 2 st y is equal to s square minus t square and z is equal to s square plus t square then can you can you be certain that this will give you a pythagorean triplet yes you can because you can say x square plus y square is equal to 2 st whole square plus s square minus t square whole square which becomes s square minus t square whole square plus 4 s square t square which is just s square plus t square whole square which is equal to z square so clearly it fits pythagoras's rules now we also know that given given 
any two integers s and t with s greater than t s greater than t and s and t have no common factors no common factors we will be able to now find three primitive pythagorean triplets right we'll be able to find one primitive pythagorean triplet by the formula x is equal to 2st y is equal to s square minus t square z is equal to s square plus t square so let's take some examples so that it's clear to us uh, let's take some numbers so for example let's take s as 3 and t as 2 then what is x is equal to 2st 2st becomes 2 into 2 into 3 which is 12 and y, what is y y is equal to s square minus t square which is equal to 9 minus 4 is equal to 5 so y is equal to 5 and z is equal to s square plus t square which is equal to 9 plus 4 is equal to 13 right so clearly we have ended up getting 12 5 and 13 right these are our three pythagorean and this is our pythagorean triplet and it doesn't have any common factor right so similarly given any two co-prime integers co-prime integers no common factors in s and t we'll be able to find a pythagorean triplet right so that gives us a method to find infinite number of pythagorean triangles in conclusion i will just restate euclid's theorem euclid's theorem says says that if x y and z x y and z are a primitive pythagorean triplet primitive pythagorean triplet with no common factors then the first result that we proved was x and y have to be either even comma odd or odd comma even and the second result that we got is we can find we can find two integers s and t with no common factors factors and say s is greater than t such that such that x will be equal to 2st y will be equal to s square minus t square and z will be equal to s square plus t square here we have assumed obviously that x is the even number and y is the odd number if you have y is the even number then y will be 2st and x will be this s square minus t square so this gives us a general way to arrive at any possible pythagorean triplet that you would care for right so that is a good way to find out all possible pythagorean triplets and we can verify very easily whether some particular triplet is fitting this pattern some given triplet whether it is a pythagorean triplet or not right so for example if we look at someone tells us whether 20 21 or 29 is a pythagorean triplet then we can quickly check is x is equal to 2st satisfied for 20 so st must be 10 and if it is 10 then we can possibly take s as 5 and t is 2 so is 5 square minus 2 square is equal to 21 yes it is 25 minus 4 so this satisfies so therefore 5 square plus 2 square is the other number so quickly we have checked and 20 21 29 is a pythagorean triplet you can check it by squaring 400 441 841 clearly it's working right so this is a nice theorem which prove which helps us find all possible pythagorean triplets so that's it for this video and we'll meet you next time with more results in number theory and triangles